everybody, in today's video we are going to be showing you a cactus nail art design that is extreme 3D over the top cactuses standing up off the nail. It is so cool. It would make a really pretty pendant, like you could turn it into earrings or something and change the way the cactuses are positioned. There are so many um, nail art applications outside of on top of nails. So this is a design that I would definitely say kind of falls into that ballpark where you could do something else with it. You can make a cute little like terrarium miniature with all these different cactuses. I love it so much. I hope you guys love it as much as I do. And don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. Bye. So we are going to begin with just kind of a marbled background of some tans and some browns and maybe even a little bit of glitter if we are feeling extra fancy. Just something that kind of looks like that dry desert earth. It doesn't have to be anything too fancy. In fact, try to keep it pretty simple. Just marble some stuff in there, add a little bit of gold glitter in. Like I said, gold glitter if you're feeling fancy. You don't have to. And then we're going to be encapsulating it with a layer of clear acrylic to make sure that it is nice and strong and just make sure that everything seems a smooth, even. You have an apex in there all of that great stuff with that being said obviously this is not a nail where strength is really a prevalent concern because the cactuses are not what i would call strong durable wearable etc so if you don't want to take the time to actually sculpt in a perfect apex file it in do all of that great stuff to make sure that this nail in general is completely infallible don't worry about it we all know this nail isn't something somebody's going to actually wear so if the apex is a little bit less than that's okay so now to actually sculpt in those cactuses, which are so much fun, really just so much fun. We're going to be doing a different shade of green with all different cactus pieces on a nail form backing. So I'm going to start with like your classic cactus shape, kind of a um, saguaro cactus. We're going to do a dark green right in the middle there. And my, so I always have a really soft spot for, for saguaros. My uh, grandmother has a, um, has or had I guess had a huge saguaro right in her front yard for the longest of time beautiful cactus absolutely massive unfortunately it did fall during a storm a couple years ago but oh my goodness it was just so impressive I love them so that one had to be in the middle of my little design of course I could not uh couldn't miss that. And then we're going to be doing just different types of cactuses and succulents. I don't necessarily have a species for the rest of them. So if anybody is a succulent or cactus, um, knowledgeable person, you can go ahead and comment any of the other species. The one I have is kind of an aloe vera type of a look to it. The long, um, like long skinny spines. The one I'm going to be doing right now kind of reminds me of aloe vera, which is something that I have a whole bunch of right now, but not necessarily in color mostly aloe is more of a brighter grass green but anywho I've got the first one that's got like the big petal shapes that you think of for um, a certain type of cactus with the lighter green and then with more of like this gray kind of a dusty gray green I'm going to be doing those longer skinnier bits like I said the really the only one that I have a more specific species in mind is the saguaro otherwise just I searched for cactus images and I just grabbed a whole bunch of them and picked the ones that I thought would go together. So we've got our different types of greens when you're making this design or a similar design and you're making a whole bunch of different types of a plant, pick different greens. So if you don't have a whole bunch of different greens in your collection of acrylics, you just have one or two or zero collection, you know, zero types of green, sculpt everything with white and then go through and paint them all. It's pretty easy to mix acrylic paint or gel polish to get different colors, although I really would recommend doing it with acrylic paint because it'll dry down pretty thin and you won't build up a whole bunch of bulk and you won't lose your your textures that you've sculpted in. But if you, so if you don't have all these different shades of green, don't really worry about it, just paint them later. Or even if you have one or two shades of green, sculpt them half in each color and then go through and add different highlights. As you'll see in a moment, I did add some color to all of these cactuses with acrylic paint. They all have a little bit more detail done to them with different colors. So eventually they'll get there anyway. So I'm going to start my with my nail. I'm going to glue my sorrel right in the middle of the nail using some nail glue and a tweezers to hold it up. Didn't hold it up for long, eventually it fell over, but I'm gonna just use my finger to support it while I attach it really well with more of my dark green acrylic. That color is absolutely gorgeous, you guys. All of the colors that I'm using are going to have their names listed in the description box below. And they are all, they are all from Double Dip. So if you want to know what the colors are, go ahead and look there. That particular green is just one of my favorites. It has a very slight shimmer to it, and it is absolutely gorgeous for anything that is plant related like this, or for like the holiday season, St. Patrick's Day. It's just a color that I know that I reach for quite a bit. A couple of these are. There's just a few. I like green, so you know, it makes sense. But if you're doing any kind of crazy sculpting like I do and you ever need a plant color, I would actually recommend building up greens. That's one of the colors. Greens and browns 
are some of the most basic colors that I feel like I need the most often. I'm almost always using a green and a brown. So if you don't have that much acrylic and you're thinking of building up an acrylic collection, these might be colors that um, are the most versatile or some of the most versatile. So I've got my detail sculpted to one side of my cactus and I'm going to turn the nail around and repeat the process on the other side, adding details both to the body of the cactus as well as the arms. Just a little bit of texture, take the very tip of your brush and drag lines through it like so. Don't worry about sculpting any of um, the little cactus needles right now. You can add those later. And those we actually aren't going to do anything that is legitimately pokey. We're just going to do some polka dots with white paint, which will be just fine. And it'll give that look without adding any unnecessary sharpness. So now we're going to be gluing on the next bit of cactus. So all of these cactuses have a very similar process for assembly. And you'll see that. So there's a lot of um, almost see that one. The nail glue just laughs at me. I don't know what it is. Me and nail glue, we we do not agree. But um, a very similar process to sculpting all of these cactuses. As far as like the base technique, you make a basic shape on a nail form backing of whatever kind of cactus you want. Again, I looked at, I just Googled for images of succulents and for cactuses and did little cactus scenes and different things, which is how I came up with my shapes. So you can either replicate what I did or go and find your own, whatever you want to do. Um, so you sculpt your basic shape on your nail form backing. It comes out pretty thin. So you're going to need to add some acrylic to the front and the back of it to bulk it up and make it look like it's three dimensional in a 360 degree fashion. So after you have this little base done, then you're going to attach it to the nail. For the most part, there is one that that's done a little differently. But after it's attached to the nail, then you bulk it up and you sculpt it up and you have this wonderful base to start it with. So as far as this goes, this is a very basic technique to sculpt almost anything that you want to be extreme 3D this way. You sculpt a base, you add more to it, you add more details. Depending on the case, this is actually an easy one. These cactuses, even though there's a bunch of different cactus shapes and it is tedious and time consuming and all of that stuff, as far as just general technique goes for this type of a style this one is so simple because you're not working with anything partially wet that's one of the things that's actually the most difficult I think is when you have a design where you're working with something where it's you need the acrylic to be malleable and you can't have it be 100% cured because sometimes acrylic just cures really quick or sometimes it never reaches that perfect play-doh consistency or there's you know just different things so if you're trying to decide and you want to try a design like this and you don't know which one to do, maybe give this one a try. Even if you sculpt one type of cactus, if you've never done a design like this, a single cactus is plenty. It's, you know, it's a great start to this type of a technique. And then after you get kind of used to this, then you can go on and work on bigger and better things and more extreme and more crazy with multiple colors per item and all of that stuff. But if you just kind of want to get your foot in the door, you know, wet your lips, do all that kind of stuff and kind of get an idea for making this off the nail extreme stuff, this might not be a bad choice. Plus, this is a big one too. If you have never done anything like this before and you're nervous because you're sculpting something, you've never done it before, it's a new thing. First off, take that little voice in your head that's telling you all of those horrible things about, you know, it's not going to turn out very well, etc, etc, and shove it into the corner. It's going on a timeout because you've never done it before. You can't expect perfection if that's the case and you've never done it before. Give yourself a huge high five for trying it for one thing. That's like the biggest deal ever is trying something new. It's terrifying for a lot of people. Um, so you already succeeded because you're trying it. That's the first and foremost, most important thing. Second off, if you're making a cactus, have you ever seen a saguaro? They aren't perfect and that is part of their charm. They don't have to be smooth, perfect, symmetrical. They shouldn't be. So if you're nervous about anything and you're thinking it's not going to turn out, it's not going to look right, that is part of the reason why I love some of these very natural elements to sculpt and to make and to paint is because they're not perfect. You're not striving for perfection. You're striving for recognizability. And that's a lot easier to achieve than absolute unquestionable perfection. Something a lot harder is going to be sculpting a particular character. Like for instance, if you want to sculpt Elsa or you want to sculpt a certain Pokemon or whatever it is that you're trying to sculpt, that stuff is a lot a lot more difficult and something I personally shied away from for years. Whereas something like a cactus, I was always you know kind of all for because you can make mistakes. A real live plant isn't flawless. A fake plant, sure, that might be flawless, but a real plant, you go to, you know, a nursery and you look at their plants, there's little perfections. Uh, a moth nibbled on a leaf there, a branch got knocked over and bumped off there. Something happened 
and that's part of their beauty and their charm. So when you're sculpting something like this, if it looks a little uneven, well, yeah, sure, maybe you want to fix it. But do you have to? No, you don't have to. You can if you'd like to, but there's no rules. There's no laws. It's just kind of freeing to have that in the back of your mind that you are more than welcome to make a mistake. And it's really not going to damage the final effect of the design whatsoever. So now that we've got all of our cactuses done, I am going to add a bloom to them because cactuses and bloom are one of the most magical things. I'm going to take a peachy color because that looks absolutely fantastic with greens. Peachy colors and greens are just one of the best combos. So we're going to be rolling up a little string of that coral color acrylic, that peachy coral. I'm going to be taking a bit more of that same color, sticking that on the top of my little uh, ball shaped cactus, even though it's got the little bumpies on the sides, but I'm going to attach that to the side. And then using a sort of a soft, very pale teal color, aqua color, I'm going to be adding a bit of that to the tips of my pokey aloe vera-esque cactus. We're going to be going through and adding just the very tips of all of those. My daughter, Miss Melody, when she saw this design, she goes, oh, you made an under the sea design. And then she wanted to know where the fish were. <laughs> So like I said, when you're doing something like this, go for recognizability. Apparently my three-year-old thinks that this was all under the water stuff and I can totally see where she would have gotten that impression, which makes me think I do need to make an under the water scene similar to this with some fish. So you guys might have to keep your eyes open for that. That might be one of my next things on my to-do list eventually. But anyways, I love this little design. I'm going to go through and I'm going to be doing a little bit of a purpleness onto my aqua color cactus. The great thing with them is there's so many different colors that you can go with. There's so many different types of cactuses. You can have so much fun with this. And then I'm going to take a dotting tool. I rarely do use dotting tools because I don't think, I don't make dots that often. So to get to use a dotting tool was kind of like a throwback for me. I haven't used one. I don't even know how long it's been, but we're going to use the dotting tool and add the little dots all the way along on our cactus for the different little pokey needles on our cactuses, cact on our cacti the various ones. So we've got the cacti needles on the saguaro. And then on the other ones, we're going to be adding just some polka dots go through. And on the saguaro, you want to do the lines, the lines of dots on some of your other cactuses. They can be a lot more randomized. You can just do dot, 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 kind of go from spot to spot. They don't have to be completely covered. They can be partially covered with the needles. They can have some here, some there. You can focus on the tops of them, kind of let the bottoms of them be more natural looking, however you want to do it. Just go through and add some more of those little polka dots. There's so much different um, clip arts too that you can look at to get ideas for your cactuses. They don't necessarily have to be a realistic image that you're seeing. I'm going to do black polka dots on the cactus that has the flower on it. They don't all have to have white and they actually don't all have to have polka dots whatsoever. I'm going to do a little bit of a white highlighting. And then just to jazz this up a little bit more because I could not resist adding in a bit more of that glam element. I'm going to be spreading out some jewelry gel all around my cacti in between and around them. And then applying some gel sealer over the top of the wet jewelry gel. And then before you cure, so after all of it's been top coated and covered, you're going to grab just a small selection of rhinestones and crystals and place those down. I'm going to bring in a little bit more of that coral color with some coral color rhinestones and some different kind of like blue greeny ones, some yellowish ones, some golden ones, and just add a bit more sparkle to the ground. It doesn't look quite as dry and cracked and deserted as what I think of when I think of a, you know, cactus environment, but it does definitely still have the cactus and environment coloration. And I just love this one so much. Like I said, beautiful. It would make such a beautiful pendant or earring set or something along those lines, especially a pendant doesn't get bumped as much or um, hit as much as say a ring or a nail does. So it'd be a little bit more durable and less risky for breaking it. I hope you guys like it as much as I do, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.